In the last episode, we went on a little adventure with our new donkey friend, and we stumbled across this amazing little town called No Water. We drank some water from the town fountain, which in hindsight probably wasn't my smartest idea. Definitely did not die to a zombie on the first night. Met up with Errington, one of the locals, who was nice enough to show us around. We then decided that we liked it here so much that we're going to stick around for a little while. So we built this cool little starter house on wheels that I think turned out absolutely awesome. And the view from the balcony is pretty nice too. So for the past couple of weeks, I've been trying to get ourselves geared up enough so if we were to die <laughs> and lose our stuff, it won't be too difficult for us to get up and running quickly again. So with the elytra that Errington gave us in the last episode, we made a trip to the end and got ourselves a few spare sets of wings, just in case. Looked at an Enderman the wrong way, and um, he didn't like me at all. But we got all that stuff back. There's something quite relaxing about an end raid, don't you think? Except for when you die, of course. Well, maybe it's just me. All right, <laughs> let's check out the loot. Okay, so here we have five extra sets of wings. Obviously, the sixth set I have on my back at the moment. A few diamonds here and there. Uh, I actually probably got another stack or so of shulker shells, which I've since used, and I'll show you guys what I've used those for in a few minutes. Uh, obviously, a few bits and pieces, six dragon heads, nothing to sneeze about, and uh, almost five, sorry, almost four stacks of end rods. Now, we've obviously got a fair bit of sort of spare gear that we can use if and when we need to, if, if and when we die, of course. And, um, yeah, probably this iron armor, which I'll probably never use. Uh, a few saddles and a few potions, which is also nice. So, guys, as I said, for the past couple of weeks, I've been a little bit busy. I may have gotten a little bit carried away with the playing and not so much the recording. I've just been really enjoying myself and really enjoying the overall early game stuff and, and basically just having some fun with it all. So let me show you what I've been up to. So after finishing the starter house on wheels, I decided it was time to find a little spot just outside of no water where I could build a few starter farms. I found this nice little hilly area right next to a village, which was really handy. So I got myself a couple of villages and started setting myself up. Now I wasn't actually going to show this on camera because frankly it's not much to look at, but I did want to show you guys where I'm getting all the resources from for the builds that we have planned. Let's come inside and check it out. So we've got a little, um, I'm not sure what you call this, a little safety protection, uh, safety protection area that I just fell in. Safety protection area for when zombies decide that they want to come and say hello. Yeah, so this is what we've got so far, guys, a little, little trading hall. So I've got all the books that you can possibly imagine, and these guys are going to come in handy later on in the episode. I've also got, um, what have I got? A couple of farmer guys here. I've got four farmer guys. Weapons guys, so I can get all my, um, all my weapons, all my tools, and obviously diamond armor as well. Got a couple of guys that um, trade the rotten flesh and also uh, the old bottle of enchanting to get some portable XP, which is always nice. And um, the lapis and also redstone if I, if I, Need to grab some extra redstone, which is handy. Only three masons because basically they're just for just for my personal use of quartz. Originally, I did set up this dirty little um, villager breeder. Very, very, uh, <laughs> very, very basic breeder, guys. I'd just chuck a, a boat out the front of this. The guys would breed up, and the little babies would come. I think they could come outside here, and they just pop in the in the boat, and then I would uh, obviously move them into their little pods. Very manual, but this is pretty much only going to be temporary. It's a bit of a mess. Obviously, I'm kind of living out, kind of living out of, of shulkers right now, but all these guys are basically for the books that I'm trying to um, gather up. And later in the episode, we, uh, spoiler alert, 
we might be building a bookshop. Now this cute little thing spawned in and they are going to be perfect for the plans that we have in a future episode. But we'll have to give him or her a name, won't we? If you have any ideas, let me know. But if we head downstairs here, we've just got a couple of farms here that I've, again, very, very, very... I'm embarrassed by this, to be honest. But anyway, we've got a melon and pumpkin farm here. The old, um, our mango design, um, the one that everyone builds. Little Tango Tech sugarcane farm here, which, I've, which is basically I've, I've turned off at the moment because I've got more than enough for what I need for the short term anyway. A little bee farm. Now, I'm actually not too sure whose design this was originally, to be honest. If I can find it, I'll put a link in the description, um, of course. It's kind of something that I've sort of just adapted over time. And I'm, to be honest, I'm not too sure I can who I can give credit for because... I basically just know how to build it now, so um, apologies if, if I don't have that in the description, but that's basically just for my copper. Also got this little cactus farm, not much at all, just four, but it is kicking along quite nicely. Also a little um, cocoa bean farm, which I've got <laughs> probably more than enough that I'll uh, that I'll ever need. Now this is a uh, another El Mango design. This is the uh, this is the mud farm, but. Um, yeah, it's got that common issue where the the water bottles just keep spitting out. So it's got heaps and heaps of water bottles for some reason. So, um, yeah, so that's a pretty cool thing for um, making mud. And this is also a uh, just a little wheat farm, a little micro wheat farm, which I use to, um, to just get a ton and ton of wheat, which is nice and easy. We've got a little iron farm. I've turned that off as well because I've, I've got more than enough, more than enough iron. But basically all it is is just a couple of villagers in here and uh, there's a guy behind there that's scaring him I've got two blocks there that they can't actually see uh, have line of sight for the for the zombie at the moment so it is turned off and these guys are I guess uh, happy again rather than getting scared every three seconds so there we have it guys a not so beautiful underground <laughs> area with a few little starter farms and a, and a decent trading hall I do have all the books that you can basically get so that's really cool. So I'm really, really happy with that. As I said, I wasn't going to show you guys this because it's, frankly, it's a little embarrassing. But this is where I'm getting all my stuff from. The one problem is it kind of isn't big enough for some of the larger farms that I needed. So I needed to go in search for a little island where I could build some of the larger farms. I searched far and wide for the perfect little island. This one seemed okay. Plus, it was only 200 blocks away. First farm on the list was a general mob farm, for two reasons. Firstly, gunpowder to make some rockets, and secondly, bones to make some bone meal. I need a good source of bone meal for some farms that I plan on building. This of course is the Nembom original, the farm that everyone builds. Next up was the copper farm. Now this is also a Nembom design originally, but I followed the Shulkercraft tutorial video for this one. I've built this farm a few times in the past, and it's pretty easy to build and it produces tons upon tons of copper. And you'll see why we need so much copper later on in the episode. As you can see, it uses the zombie reinforcement mechanic and these water streams convert the zombies into drowned that then drop the copper ingots. It can be a bit tricky to get the first zombie in there to prime the farm, but once that's done, it's a pretty awesome farm. I can sit here AFK for hours and collect all the copper I could ever need. Maybe we might open a copper shop in the future. Oh, and it's also an excellent source of XP. I then come across a completely random pack of wild, geared up zombies on the nether roof. Not sure what that's about. Definitely nothing to do with the copper farm that I just built. Then we built a couple of tree farms. First of which was a mangrove farm. The original design is by a guy called Kangarooks6. But I followed the Shulkercraft tutorial again because their tutorials are nice and simple and really easy to follow. Now this farm <laughs> is, is pretty amazing to be honest. Um, it wasn't the simplest farm to build. It probably took me a couple of days mainly because of the TNT dupers at the top there. But um, it's an amazing farm. I'd definitely build it again. And this tree farm is of course ENXO4's versatile tree farm. Now. This farm is so simple to build, it's not funny. <laughs> and it produces every type of tree, except dark oak and of course mangrove, but 
I mean, it's got the fungus farm in the bottom right-hand corner there. It's very simple to set up. Super easy tutorial to follow. Highly recommend this farm. And look, it doesn't get any easier than this. So now that we're all geared up and we have a few farms that we can easily gather resources for future builds, I think it's time we started getting serious. I think we should look at a way to earn ourselves some diamonds. <laughs> so let's head over to some water and check out the location of today's build. So guys, this is some water, just outside of no water. <laughs> and this is where all the shops are getting built. And as I hinted to earlier, we are going to build ourselves a bookstore. But not just any old bookstore. No, 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 no. <laughs> we are going big on this one, and this is the location that I've chosen. It doesn't look like much now. <laughs> However, we have all of these resources gathered up, ready for today's build. So without further ado, let's do this. And there it is, guys. It's finally done. That took longer than I care to admit. The front facade, I was going for like a, a grandfather clock look to it. So there's a clock face, obviously, in the middle there. Got the front door, obviously. And like a nice gradient of dark oak and mangrove and um, the muddy, muddy mangrove roots or whatever they're called down the bottom. Fair bit of copper as you'll see. <laughs> so that's hence the reason why I needed a copper farm and a mangrove farm. I'm hoping it's not too brown. It is very brown, but we've got uh, sort of a gradient of bricks, copper and jungle and then jungle at the top. So I think it, I think it looks good. Obviously we added the trees to the side, so it um, sort of gave it a bit more color to the outside, but I love the way these trees turned out, actually. I was just playing around, and I think they turned out pretty snazzy. I'm really happy with them. But if we head around this side, guys, we've got, obviously, the two trees on this side. Just not too much going on on this side, but um, we'll fly in up the top there because we've got a bit of an entranceway to the top level of the building, but I wanted to show you the outside first of all. So while I was building this, I was thinking about a name for the store, and I kind of like Book Bazaar. Now... <laughs> That's not set in stone. I was actually thinking you guys could probably come up with a better name than what I can. So at the moment, I'm thinking Book Bazaar. If you guys have any other cool names, please leave them down in the comments below. So let me show you the interior, guys. And here it is. It's empty. <laughs> no interior just yet. I've, um, I've kind of run out of time this week. So I think next episode, we'll definitely do an interior in here. Because I do have a pretty nice interior plan. But... Um, and I also need a bit more time to stock up all the books. But this is it. And I think it looks even better from the inside. It feels like a an old train station or something like that. It's just very, very cool. I'm, I'm very, very happy. So as I was saying, guys, there's a bit of a fly-in entrance from this end of the building. So you guys on the server can fly in here, purchase some books. And um, I'm actually thinking, so the bookstore will be obviously down in the, on the ground level. But I'm actually thinking there's enough room up here to put in a secondary shop. But um, you guys will have to wait till the next episode for me to uh, reveal what I have planned for this top level. Unfortunately, that's all we got time for today, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed the episode and I hope you can join me in the next one where we can build the interior up for the bookshop and also a shop upstairs. Thank you so much for watching 
and I'll see you in the next one. Bye! I love this. It looks so good. It looks so... Can I fly? No, I can't. Ow.